This week, I'm taking you to Arnest Vale to explore Adventure Farm and a Nature Resort. This is the place to be as it encourages you to really appreciate nature and the lush greenery of Tobago. Here's a look at what's to come in the next half hour. I'm Davia Chambers and this is Let's Talk Tobago. Tobago's SEA results are out. Youth Apprenticeship Program in Agriculture includes more in their curriculum and later details on the new metrology unit introduced in Tobago. These stories and more when Let's Talk Tobago continues. We'll be right back. And it is said, it's the land of tomorrow. Princess Margaret say, come to Vigo for holiday. Now the whole world say, come to Vigo for holiday. Adventure Farm and a Nature Resort was established in the year 2000 by owner Ian McKay. His love for agriculture, flora and fauna really motivated him to create this nature retreat to share his passion with the public. Now in our first story this week, we tell you about the performance of primary school students in Tobago for the 2017 SEA examinations. Have a look. Shanice Stanislaus of St. Andrews Anglican is the top SEA or secondary entrance assessment student in Tobago. Shanice obtained a total standard score of 241.77 and will be attending Bishop's High School come September. At this time, doing your exam at standard five would mean that you would have been doing well under the tutorship of your teachers all the way through. So I am congratulating the teachers and I'm also congratulating the principal on a job well done. Second place went to Chelsea Lowe of St. Nicholas Private Primary School. She's also heading to Bishop's High. St. Nicholas took seventh and eighth spots. St. Andrew's Anglican had four students in the top ten for Tobago, including Carrie Manning, who was third. Mixed emotions. I feel excited and I, I don't know what else. At first it was kind of hard, but then I really worked it over and over again and it got easier. St. Andrew's Anglican also copped the fifth and ninth positions. I feel motivated. I knew from the onset, with sitting with the teachers and having discussion and conferencing and coming into the class a lot to motivate the students, that it was possible, there was a possibility that we could top the SCA exam in Tobago. Um, this would not have been possible without the assistance of Almighty God, without the support of the parents and without the effective and efficient teaching of the teachers. Meantime, the top boy in Tobago is Jordan Langley of Scarborough Methodist Primary. Jordan placed sixth with a total standard score of 238.749. He will also be attending Bishop's High. I'm Caroline Wallace for Let's Talk Tobago. There are over 50 species of birds and a number of other species of animals right here. Visitors can expect to see an abundance of hummingbirds, beautiful and lush flower gardens, as well as a large tilapia pond. We bring back the old time days in this next report as the Heritage Festival is less than two weeks away. As we know, the country is still affected by the downturn in the economy. This means budget cuts. Caroline Wallace tells us how this will impact the Tobago Heritage Festival for 2017. We're just a few days away from the opening night of the Tobago Heritage Festival 2017, under the theme Lenhand. The festival this year runs from July 14th to August 1st, 2017. This year, though, there has been a reduction in the budget. Chairman of the Tobago Heritage Festival Committee, George Leacock, says $7 million will be spent on the festival. It is, however, inclusive of any sponsorship that the festival committee is able to garner. So the Tobago House of Assembly provides us with a backstop of $7 million and indicates that $7 million is the figure that will be spent on the Tobago Heritage Festival. If, more, if money is gained by way of sponsorship, the Assembly's contribution will be reduced to a figure equal to the amount of sponsorship gained. Therefore, there will be changes to many of the productions. The Heritage Youth Camp will be converted into a series of heritage educational bus tours. 
Art exhibition, the exhibit of artifacts, and food fair will now be a single event held on the Esplanade. Meanwhile, the Emancipation Day Parade and the Drum Festival have been combined into one event. The first obvious change is the removal from the Tobago Heritage Festival program and therefore its funding all of the events that did not fall within the period July 14th to August 1st. Shows have been combined to, in, to reduce infrastructural costs with the added benefit of probably combining the audiences of those two shows or three shows or whatever it might be into a larger audience. Mr. Leacock says ticketing for committee and community shows will be controlled by the Tobago Heritage Festival Committee. He says all tickets will be printed and distributed centrally. The opening night of the Tobago Heritage Festival 2017 takes place on July 14th at the Shaw Park Complex. On July 15th, the action moves to Mariah for the old-time wedding. On July 16th, the Roxborough Seafood Festival will take place. Charleville Natural Treasures will occur on Monday, July 17th. I'm Carolyn Wallace for Let's Talk Tobago. The property is called Adventure Farm and the Nature Resort. The area is known as Adventure, which lends its name to the nature facility. This property was a part of the original Adventure Estate, which was in fact the smallest sugar estate at the time when the sugar industry flourished right here in Tobago. Now, what's your status? In commemoration of HIV Regional Testing Day, members of the public were given an opportunity to know their status through the Scarborough, Canaan and Roxborough Health Centers. Crystal George tells us more. Know your status in an effort to raise awareness about the importance of getting tested. The Tobago Regional Health Authority, in collaboration with the Ministry of Health, hosted regional testing day at Scarborough, Canaan and Roxborough Health Centers. This event created an opportunity for people to get free HIV testing. So Regional HIV Testing Day is a chance for us to promote awareness about HIV AIDS and promote testing as well within our population. Right now we have about 11,000 people living with HIV in Trinidad and Tobago. So we're trying to have more people aware of their status to seek treatment and therefore prevent further spread of this disease. Knowing your status and early treatment are some of the benefits people take advantage of when they get tested. HIV screenings are important. Here's why. Global standards set out by WHO, which states that 90% of people with HIV should know their status, 90% should be on treatment, and 90% should be virally suppressed. We aim to promote testing so people become aware of their status. And not only benefits the person because of early treatment, prevents further complications, but also prevents young women from potentially spreading the virus to their unborn infants. Testing is confidential. Patients are taken to a private room where they would be counseled by nurse about the process. The process is simple, fast, and painless. But don't take it from me. Just a small blood sample is taken from a finger brick and the test takes about 20 to 30 minutes. Before the person does that test, there's usually pre-test counseling where patients are informed about HIV and the test that's about to be done. And there's also counseling after the result. Um, if there's a negative result, you get counseling. And if there's a positive result, pe people are giving proper information about where to seek treatment. People can get tested throughout the year from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. at the Scarborough Health Centre on Monday and Wednesdays and at the Canaan and Roxborough Health Centre on Tuesdays and Thursdays. I'm Crystal George for Let's Talk Tobago. Stay tuned, Let's Talk Tobago will be right back. In the Youth Apprenticeship Program in Agriculture, YAPA, students are learning a lot, such as how to correctly trim the hooves of small ruminant animals, or how to fertilize fruit-bearing plants. Now in its 11th cycle, the program is set to put more emphasis on value chain development, starting this month. 
participants will develop products from the raw materials derived from animals and plants. The value chain is how do we add value to the various products that come out from primary production um, in an effort, one, to treat with the issue of food security, um, two, to extend the, 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 the useful life of the products that come out from primary production, and of course everything is financial based. How could we optimize the income that we can generate from the activities that we are engaged in? YAPA is designed to provide people ages 17 to 40 with the knowledge and skills needed for a career in agriculture. This year, the program had its largest intake since it was restarted in 2004, around 50 students. This means that one of the program's objectives is being realized, ensuring that there are future generations of farmers who can consistently supply the island with food. If we as younger persons see an avenue where we can invest our time in growing and developing this business called agriculture, we would then again be able to sustain ourselves because it's not agriculture, agriculture is not just planting crops or rearing animals. There are different there are aspects of it. But if we started something small, whether it's manning two sheep or a couple of cows, we would be able to grow ourselves. And it should, we, as young people, we should get into it. Throughout the 10-month program, students get a stipend. Now 60% of the course is based in practical work, 30% is theory and 10% a final project. The students are also linked with farms, agribusinesses and agricultural institutions in the THA so that they can get hands-on experience. This program has given me more knowledge in learning about plants and animals and will help me to be a better farmer or some, any, 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 any career in agriculture on a commercial level. Over the years, several Yapa graduates have started their own businesses. Others continued their studies at the tertiary level, while others secured jobs at various schools and even at the Division of Food Production and Fisheries. I'm Amadara Mills for Let's Talk Tobago. Mr. McKay's interest in this type of business stemmed from the fact that he was introduced to the hospitality and the tourism industry from quite a tender age. This as his family had interest in hotels in Tobago. Now it's always good to know more than one language. The Division of Tourism, Culture and Transportation hosted a six-month Spanish class for Tobagonians. The program was a collaboration between Tobago and Venezuela. Here are more details in this report. Bienvenido la primera entrega de esta clase de español. Welcome to the first installment of this Spanish class. Hosted by the Division of Tourism, Culture and Transportation, the 17 students who participated in this Spanish class for six months through an exchange program have graduated. The theme for this program was Breaking Barriers and Connecting People Through Culture and Arts. And according to Tourism Secretary Nadine Phillips-Stewart, this program enhances the island as it seeks to build an all-inclusive cultural diversity. The work you have done over the past few months has allowed you to grow exponentially and your future is now ripe with exciting opportunities for cultural exploration. I trust you will not just sit on your newfound knowledge, but test the limits of your language skills and historical and cultural insights by possibly exploring mon one or more of the Spanish-speaking territories across the globe, essentially becoming ambassadors for Tobago as you also do your part to share our unique culture with the world. Speaking different languages is a plus, so having this collaboration with Venezuela and Tobago is good. It also develops stronger ties. We are convinced of the need to consolidate our bonds of brotherhood with the people of the greater Caribbean. And this has motivated us to share our language and our culture with this beautiful island of Tobago. We hope that this program will continue to bear fruit so that every semester we will see an increasing number of persons attending the classes. Two participants commented on the program. It has been for some time that uh, I wanted to learn Spanish. Um, back in university, 
I didn't really make the time. I re was really looking forward to an opportunity to get to learn Spanish. And when I, I, I heard it came right at my doorstep, I, I, I couldn't resist. And so November, I, I was quite enthusiastic. In spite of my heavy workload and, 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 and studies and that sort of thing, I really took the time and, and, and no regrets. I'm already exposed to the language on a very regular basis. Um, I just felt it, was, it would be a good addition to learn the music as well, learn to play the quattro. So it was offered and I decided to sign up. This was a first time program. They also offered percussion, violin, and quattro classes for students. I am David Jacobs for Let's Talk Tobago. There are two villas on the property, both named after birds. The shutters in the villas are made from green heartwood and were constructed by physically challenged persons. Both villas overlook the gardens, which give a view of a few of the fruit trees on the property. Donating blood can save a life. In this next report, Omadara Mills shares the benefits of regular blood donations. Have a look at this story. Christian Redman started giving blood two years ago. His first donation was for a patient at the Scarborough General Hospital who urgently needed all negative blood for medical procedure. This 22-year-old continues to share this vital fluid that we all need to survive. It felt good. It felt somewhat important, I should say, yeah. to assist somebody in, not in a direct way really, but indirect. It's important to make, cause people are always sick and People would always need blood and it, the body produces blood on its own, so why not just give the blood and the body will re replace it soon. From the 15 ounces or 450 milliliters of blood that's drawn during the process, one donor can help save the lives of three people. That's because the blood is divided into three different components, plasma, red blood cells, and platelets. Giving blood also has personal benefits. It removes excess iron and nutrients that can cause stress or have negative effects on the body. One of the main benefits is um, it's about 33% less risk for cardiovascular diseases as a result of donating blood on a regular basis. In terms of donating blood, females can donate blood every four months and males donate about every three months. And what this does, it reduces the amount of pressure and stress that the cardiovascular system would have when you remove a pint of blood, let's say every three to four months. Donated blood lasts for 35 days, after which it is discarded. But blood is rarely thrown away, since it's in high demand at the Scarborough General Hospital. The blood bank needs a continuous supply for the treatment of medical conditions, scheduled surgeries, and emergency incidents. And in emergency cases, we must have blood available because it could be a motor vehicle accident, it could be a gunshot, it could be so many different cases where that person has to go under a knife immediately and they have the, the tendency to bleed out. So we need to be able to have blood available to provide for that patient, that patient doesn't go into shock, for example, for not having enough blood in their system. Potential donors are screened before giving blood and given a drink. After donation, they are advised to have a healthy meal, drink a lot of fluids, and get some rest. Samples are tested to correctly identify the blood type and to ensure the blood is free of any diseases. If you're interested in giving blood, contact the Scarborough General Hospital's blood bank at 660-4744, extensions 3098-3099 or 3101. I'm Amadara Mills for Let's Talk Tobago. We have to take a break, but when we return, we tell you about the metrology unit at CAST. Don't go anywhere. Let's Talk Tobago. We'll be right back. Stay with us.
in recognition of their outstanding contribution to responsible environmental management and sustainable development in Trinidad and Tobago, Mr. McKay was awarded the Environmental Greenleaf Award for World Environment Day 2010 by the Environmental Management Authority and the United Nations. All instruments of measurements used at supermarkets, minimats and groceries will be assessed for accuracy. This as the Metrology Act No. 18 of 2004 has been implemented. Tobago is moving ahead with its implementation of the Act. Caroline Wallace fills us in in this next report. Very soon, all scales, weights and measurements for supermarkets, minimats and groceries will be inspected for accuracy. The Metrology Act No. 18 of 2004 has been implemented, and this affects everyone on the island. This Act governs the correct use of scales, weights, and measurements for supermarkets, minimats, and groceries. Part of the Act is the establishment of the Legal Metrology Inspectorate. This unit of inspectors will test scales to verify the accuracy of instruments of measurements used. I think that, that the, the, the major benefit will be in, um, it will give the government more control over, over, over the weighing system and the measurement system in, in um, Trinidad and Tobago, which um, is more favorable to the metric system. Consumers, when they have problems, they can come into the unit, and what we would do, we would go and investigate. The Metrology Act was implemented to ensure businesses on the island meet the international standard of measurement. The data collection process involves the collaboration of the Legal Metrology Unit Officers in Tobago and the Metrology Unit Officers in Trinidad. Well, it went in phases. The first phase is where we check like groceries, supermarkets, minimats, the central market and wayside vendors, right? What we did was to, the data that we collected was the types of instruments, right? Whether the instruments carry the metric system or both the metric and imperial system, um, whether, the, um, whether the instruments were, were electrical or just like the counter, um, digital sc counter scales. The information gathered is sent to the metrology unit in Trinidad for assessment. Officers from both islands then find solutions to ensure that businesses meet the required specifications. If a customer purchases an item and they feel as if they have been robbed, Here's what they can do. You have to bring what you would have bought so that we could wait also to make sure that you have you got short weight. And then we would go where you um, bought the item and check that instrument as well. If we find it, if we deem it to be what we call unjust, then we would speak to the owner. We would first let them know that the instrument, we wouldn't call anybody name, that the instrument, we checked it and verified that it was not just, and we will do the needed recommendation. The new system is an international system and is mostly used throughout the world. Customers with complaints can visit the Inspectorate Weights and Measures Department located at the Office of the Prime Minister in Orange Hill Road. I'm Caroline Wallace for Let's Talk Tobago. Mr. McKay is also in the business of processing food products from his organic agro-tourism facility. In the future, he hopes to have more products on the shelves to add to the list of frozen green mangoes and mango jam already gracing supermarkets in Trinidad, Tobago, and the Caribbean. Now, students of the ABC Nursery School in Glamorgan made a courtesy call to Chief Secretary Kelvin Charles recently. Here's what happened at the fun courtesy call. Have a look. Making any type of transition in life can be nerve-wracking for anyone especially children, moving into a new school, making new friends, and being in a new environment can be exciting and scary at times. That's what the student from Glamorgan's ABC Nursery School will be facing at the beginning of the new school term in September. At a courtesy call recently, the Chief Secretary, Mr. Kelvin Charles, met with the graduating class of the ABC Nursery School where he chatted with the youngsters about primary school. Though some seem very excited, others were a bit shy. What do you want to be when you grow up? My name is the Bunto Jack. When I grow up, I will be a firefighter. When I grow up, I will be a doctor. When I grow up, I will be a vet. If you want to succeed, go to college and get a
A total of 14 students were graduated. I'm Crystal George for Let's Talk Tobago. And it's now time to have your say, the segment of our program where we hear what you, the viewers, have to say. Today we are asking, what is your favorite cultural event and why? While you think about it, we'll have a look at who had their say this week. My favorite cultural event in Tobago, Jack and Boat Festival. Why? It brings out the young people. It's very, it's a very energetic sport and it keeps you healthy and strong. I guess I'd probably say heritage. Um, specifically, I like folktales and superstition. Um, it just reminds me of how things used to be long ago and you know all the things that you shouldn't do because this body said you couldn't do it and, and you know just kind of unraveling all those things. I like the Heritage Festival uh, because the, 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 the diversity of, of, of our culture it, it expresses well to the world really. Mariah Wedding. Yes. It, it embodies um, you know a lot of different things you know you have the 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 dance the the dress the ceremony the procession the heritage festival at charlotteville um, the tambu bambo experience from fort camberton right down into the village is what i enjoy and i look forward to be there this year we close yet another edition of Let's Talk Tobago and as always, we thank you for watching. Please email us with your comments or queries about the program and be sure to visit our website, like us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel. From our house to yours, I'm Davia Chambers along with the Department of Information, Office of the Chief Secretary, Tobago House of Assembly, wishing you a safe and very productive week. We close now with a montage of the 2017 SEA results.